what do you think it takes to make a good housewife? Like if you were casting a show and looking for someone, I mean, it sounds like that's kind of what you did, but what do you think it takes? Like, you know, we have so many people that fail and it's just not for them. I think you have to have a busy life and your life has to be bigger than the show. If your life is going to center around being on that show, then you're boring. If you're working that show into your life because you have a big life and you have so much going on, they can capture enough elements of your life to make a great story and a great show. And that's part of the problem. A lot of those girls had nothing else going on. And I was working five jobs, (laughs) raising a kid, have a husband, helping his office. So I have a lot going on. And when you don't have anything going on, it's very easy to sit and look for what's wrong, to nitpick, to come and sit around and come up with conspiracies in your head and to make up stories because you don't have anything else to do. When you're busy every single minute of the day, you just have to take the things that come at you as they come at you and then move on. And that's how I have to be because I don't have the luxury of sitting around and stewing over what somebody did or didn't do or said or didn't say. I don't have that luxury. But when I finish here, I'm going to go to my podcast. When I finish my podcast, you know, I have uh, the day's booked. So I don't have time to go back and say, that guy was so mean to me. I didn't like his questions. I thought those pretty blue eyes were deceiving. He's really a mean guy. Under I don't have time to run all that stuff through my head. I'm going to be like, oh, we had fun. He was great. And he was cute. And that was nice. And maybe I'll see him again one day, you know, because I'm moving on and you have to be able to move on. It's totally true. And I mean, when you're busy, you you focus at that moment. It's a right. real moment. And then you're on to something. I'm the same way as you. Every minute of the day is booked over here. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I do think most people that are on it, though, it does become their whole life. I, I do. They let it become their whole life. They start to obsess on it. I will tell you that I, a girl that used to work for me, very high powered executive. She ran a big portion of the charity for years. Super marketing girl, like smart as they come. She told me she was sitting on a plane one time and the girl in front of her was one of the girls on our show. And that the girl had her cell phone, my Frankie Grande cell phone. And she was- We've had Frankie on the show. We love, <laughs> He's one we of my love our Frankie. closest friends. So she was pulling up pictures of herself, you know, like, okay, here's a, and then she was blowing them up and she was looking at everything from her shoe to her ankle, to her legs, to her waist, to her boobs, to her neck, to her face, blowing up her eye, blowing up her eye makeup. I'm like, are you kidding me? She was doing, she said, Leah, she did it the entire three hour flight. She was going through picture by picture by picture, looking at every little piece of herself. I'm like, are you, you're kidding me? When I put this headset on, James said, your hair is puffed up in the back. I'm like, okay, well, we better push that down next. I don't know. Where's the makeup artist? Where's the hairdresser? You know, I mean, it's just, they get obsessed. And I have concluded, I've analyzed this. This is kind of my own theory. When I grew up, I had two sets of parents and two sets of grandparents and four sisters and 20,000 cousins and everybody got a lot of attention. Like I got so much attention. I mean, they were fighting. Are you going to stay with me? Are you going to go with your dad? You're going to go with your grandmother, go with the other. They're fighting to give you attention. I think some of these girls never got enough attention. And then when I went on tour with my skincare company, I would go to Prague and I would go to you know, Baden Baden, and I would go do all over and I would have a thousand women show up to hear about the seminar and want to buy the products and want to get their picture taken. And they were just like, the tension was just exhausting, but it was my business to promote my business. When I ran the health club business, I did the bodybuilding. It was my one, the trophy, all the photographers. It was, but I did it to promote my healthcare business, to promote my gyms. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't do it like for the attention, but I got so much attention that the attention was just like another thing to me. Some of these girls I have come to the conclusion have never had enough attention in their life. Whether it's growing up, their husband, their boyfriend, their friend, they don't get enough attention and this is their opportunity to get the attention. And they just, they, they're like AT to the light. They can't get enough of it, you know? I've analyzed it. I talk about it all the time. I 100%, yeah, what do you say? it's 100%. It's like, if you, first of all, these people don't know you. So if a million people are loving you and want a picture- right. It, it is, it's like, it's like a gas tank that has yeah. a hole in it. And it's like, you're filling it up and the gas is going out. Yeah. And it's like, if fame is a drug and it's like, you are, it's a certain type that stays on the show that it's, yes, it, it fills them up inside. Whereas then they think they're up here and the rest of us are down here. But yet right. all these people, A, they're more successful than you in business. And, and B, they don't even know you, by the way. They, they don't, don't even know these right. people. <laughs> you don't even know. 
<laughs> and these other people here that are not on the TV go to bed happier. They're actually happy, like inside. Yeah. And I do think it's, it's, you are lacking inside. I, I do. I There's just agree something with that like, 100%. if I have to get that attention and if I'm not getting it here, I'm going to get it there. And once they get it, they're not going to let it go. Yes. There was a girl on our show that she used to call people in the press and say, there's going to be a celebrity at this particular place. And there wasn't going to be a celebrity there, but she would be there. So Ben, she was a housewife there. The guy goes, well, now she didn't say it was her calling. Of course, she said it was an anonymous tip. And so then the photographers in the press are there like, well, the celebrity didn't show up, but there's a couple of housewives over there. Click, click. I mean, they contrive it. Do you know what I'm saying? I was shocked when I found out that, <laughs> but I now see big stars do that too. It, it's like a kind of game they do. I don't know. I guess if you're promoting a movie, I would do it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I agree because that's the thing. Like you're not promoting anything here. Like it, it <laughs> is, it's like fame is that drug and it's because they're not happy inside. It is. I, I 100%. And you can there. see the difference between the people that are happy and get the fame and have fun with it and love it, but they don't have it confused with who they are and their identity to them. It's here's their life and this is who they are. And that's just one aspect of it. They have fun with it and that's it. And the ones that are, that is their identity without that title of, you know, whatever housewife or whatever it is, reality star, whatever, they don't feel they have any relevance or life. And the yeah. ones that are refreshing and the fun ones to watch are the, the ones that just like, I don't take myself that seriously. Okay, fine. I fell on the floor drunk and I'm still fabulous. <laughs> you know, so there's that. And if it were you and me, because we're business people, like for me, I'd be like, okay, the money's not good the first year, this, but eventually 10 years, I, I yes. would just be like, this, this is going to end. This will end maybe tomorrow. Correct. Collect every dollar. Yeah. Do what you have to on the side and milk this thing for all it's And work. leave your reputation intact. You see, totally. that's the one thing that they were never able to do to me is bring out anything I didn't want anyone to know because I don't have any hidden deep dark secrets and they weren't able to make me, you know, bitch slap somebody, even though I felt like it a couple of times or embarrass myself or my son or my husband, because I'm not going to give them that. And some of these people just cannot either stop themselves or they want to do it. Like they say, don't get in a fight with a pig because the pig gets muddy and likes it, you know? And it's yeah. kind of like that. I don't like the conflict that much. I like serious conversations and serious, like if you and I have a conflict, I really do like to work it out and see where you're coming from and where I'm coming from and I'll convince you or you'll convince me or we'll compromise and agree to disagree. But I don't like the yelling and the screaming and the lying and the, I, I don't like all of that. And if you think about it, it's like a moment in time. And it's like, now, what are you going to do? If you don't have like, you're a bit like right. your life is now this person right. that bit slap someone or where's yeah. your job now? Where's your business? It's over. Yeah. Like it's. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think that's so what to happened point. to Joanna too. She got nervous that her association with it was going to cause her problems with getting endorsements from big brands, like, you know, serious brands. And I tried to warn her about that. I said, you can't let them provoke you into doing something that's going to cost you getting Chanel to say, come model my earrings. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's all relevant or relative. Mm -hmm.